Thanks for tuning in at Brackies. Hello everyone and welcome to this video on creating a tower defense game in Unity. Today we are going to be creating a main menu for our game. A lot of you guys have asked for this, so now we are going to do it. So let me just jump right into Unity here. And basically what I wanted to do was kind of make our menu feel 3D. So we'll uh, have some kind of turret as the um, main element for our menu. And then we'll place some UI around that turret that uh, is actually active in the 3D scene. So if we just go ahead and duplicate our main scene here and rename this to main menu. And actually I want to rename the main scene to main level instead. Then we can double click to open up the main menu. You can see that up here. And we can go ahead and get rid of a lot of this stuff. We pretty much want to delete everything except for the main camera, the directional light, the environment. And I believe that was pretty much it. So for all of the other stuff, we'll just go ahead and hit delete. And you can see that cleans everything out. And inside of our, envir in our environment, we want to take a ground plane and move that out and just delete all of the rest. So now we just have this empty level with some of the same settings that we used for our main level. Then what we can do is we can kind of find a subject for our scene. So let's go under prefabs and let's take say the standard turret and use this um, uh, by simply dragging it into the hierarchy and let's reset the transform on it to center it on our level here. And let's also move it down. So I believe it's negative 0.5 in order to place it directly on the ground. That is correct. And what we can do then is kind of position this where we want it to be in our picture. So somewhere around here. And then a really, really neat trick is you can take the main camera and you can snap it to the current view of our scene by simply selecting it and going to the scene and hitting Control Shift F. And that's Command Shift F if you're on the Mac. And you can see it just snaps over there. And I might want to move it just a tiny bit to the left here. So I'm just going to do that by middle mouse dragging. And you can see that it now just snaps over. So this makes it much easier to position the camera in a cool and interesting way than uh, moving up uh, the transform, which is up here. So next up is kind of adjusting our skybox here because that doesn't look too great right now. What we'll do instead is we'll change this to a solid color and then we'll have the color be whatever the ending color out here is. And that is going to ensure that we have a nice smooth transition from the um, actual ground plane here uh, to the skybox. It's a very neat little effect that looks uh, super cool because it creates this feeling of an endless empty space, uh, but it's so, so simple. So we can just t uh, choose the color picker here and choose the color at the very edge. And you can see the effect that this gives us kind of a foggy, uh, really uh, huge environment with pretty much nothing in it. Uh, so yeah, I really like this. And then of course you can do stuff like adjust the turret to how you want it. You can uh, take the uh, directional light here and you can uh, rotate it around if you're not satisfied with where the sun is shining and uh, stuff like that. But I actually think that um, everything is in a pretty nice place already and that we don't need to do a lot to change this. So next up is kind of adding some, uh, some UI elements to our scene. And also I wanted to throw in here that we are currently using these graphics for turrets, uh, but I actually have uh, some plans to maybe switch some of this stuff out with some more advanced graphics down the line. So that's going to be really exciting. But for now we'll be using this guy and you can use pretty much anything for this because what we're going to do is we're going to take our standard turret and we're going to remove the turret script. And we're also going to kind of um, break this as a prefab uh, connection. So this is currently still linked to a prefab down here and we don't want it uh, to um, be linked that way because we want to uh, remove a fire point. We want to get rid of this component. And so we'll just go under object and our game object and select break prefab instance and, th and now it's not connected in any way. And so we can go ahead and delete the fire point and uh, everything else uh, can just be left as is. So what we'll then do is uh, go in um, and uh, play some UI stuff. So let's go ahead and create a new canvas for this. So let's go UI, whoops, not particle system, UI, and then just text. And that's going to create a new text object in this huge canvas. And uh, let's just make sure that this text object scales with our canvas. And let's also set the font size to something like 80. 
And let's change the text here to say play. Then we can take our font and change that to Roboto. Uh, let's do Roboto medium. And let's change the color to white. And we can maybe also add a bit of a shadow. So let's just go shadow here. Let's um, turn that down a tiny bit. And let's do two and negative two, just to kind of give it a bit of an outline. Um, so yeah, all of the other settings we can pretty much leave as is, except for one thing. And that is currently our canvas is sized to uh, the uh, size of our screen. Instead, we want this to be wall space. And remember, we've done wall space canvases before. And the thing about those is you, of course, have to adjust this to kind of fit the size of our text. But we also have to go in here and adjust the scale because it's currently huge compared to a standard turret. You can see here just how much we actually have to zoom out. So what we'll do is go and find our scale here and put that at say 0 0.004. And I played around with this earlier and found that this was a value that worked pretty great. So we're just going to at least begin with that. And let's put our position at zero and our Y at zero, and that should place it inside of our turret. So now we can just move this up and we can simply drag this um, over if we want it to stay down here. And I think actually we want one of our elements to be here, maybe the quit button. And then we can have our play sit on top of the turret itself. So let's take our play here now and uh, rotate this by 90 degrees. And let's make sure that it sits pretty much on top uh, of our turret, which it looks like it does but it doesn't look too great from this angle so let's now move it down a bit and also drag it over uh, to something like there uh, it just looks nicer over in this view something like that cool and what we then need to do is of course turn this into a button so let's just rename the canvas here to something like a uh, top turret canvas and the text here to play button and currently this is only a text object. So let's just add a new component button. And the cool thing about adding a button component to a text object is that Unity will just go ahead and set everything up for you. So uh, right away, and this is another thing we have to do. We have to remove the camera controller on the camera so it doesn't snap to another location. Right away, we should be able to click it and you can see that something happens. So it's already turned into a button. So all we really need to do now is just uh, adjust some settings. We can add an on-click event, which we'll create in a second, but we can also maybe um, change the animation here. So currently we're just tinting the color of the object. What I wanna do instead is utilize the fact that in the last video, we created a much nicer hover animation uh, by scaling the size of our UI, so, uh, or of our UI element. So let's go and choose animation here. And uh, for navigation, we want none. And we could go ahead and auto-generate the animation and then go down into the animation tab here and edit them to create our own unique animation. Or we could just use the animation that we created in the last video. So let's just go and hit add component, add an animator. And as the controller here, we want to select the button controller that we previously created. And remember, the only special thing about this is that it has a, a normal animation, which has a scale of 111 a highlighted animation which has a scale of 1.05 and it actually also animates a tiny bit but you don't have to put that in there and then we have the pressed which goes back to 111 and it's all that this is so now when we go in and hit play uh, we can see that it does this nice hover animation and when we click it it goes and becomes uh, small very quickly Cool. So um, I believe that's all we really want to set up for on uh, this object. We could actually make make it a tiny bit bigger. Let's just try and see what happens. Should we just size up this canvas a tiny bit and um, maybe increase the size of our text? Let's just try it out just for fun. So let's take our text object here and increase the font size to say 100. And I actually like that a bit better because this is our play button and it's what we want our users to interact with uh, right away. I think it's okay to make this really, really big. So yeah, something like that. It looks nice over here and that's the primary focus. And then what we can do is uh, maybe duplicate this top turret canvas and we can then um, uh, rotate this by uh, zero degrees uh, really. So we want to just snap that back. And we can move it over here. 
and I want this to be a lot uh, smaller and I also want to snap it over within uh, a Z position of zero. And uh, I want this to say quit. So this is going to be our uh, barrel canvas and it's going to just have a quit button. Whoops, quit button. And uh, the font size here should be something like 80. Actually, we should make it less. We should make it all the way down to say uh, 40 almost. We don't want people to interact with this element. And um, we could put something like a robotic light, uh, Roboto light or even thin in here. I think actually the thin works pretty well. So let's just try that out. And let's snap back to 2D here and let's resize our canvas so we don't have this huge unnecessary canvas. And we can move the entire thing over so that it sits on top of the barrel. And then of course we'll have to put uh, quit in here as the text. And I think that already looks pretty decent. I mean, we can of course uh, spend some time getting the positioning and feel of this uh, exactly right, but it should already be working. And you can see that just the way that we set up our play to have this hover animation, a quit button button does as well. So really the only thing that's left is kind of hooking up these buttons to a script that will uh, actually call or that has some functions that we can call from the buttons uh, for actually playing the game, which means transitioning to the uh, main level scene or quitting, which means just calling application.quit, which will close down the build. So, um, but actually what I want to do is also make this feel a bit more 3D because right now we could have really just hand painted this. And I think we should utilize the fact that we just built a 3D scene for our main menu. And a way that we could do this is um, by having the turret here rotate um, a little bit to uh, kind of give the impression that it's aiming back and forth. And this will, uh, of course, we will have our UI elements follow the uh, rotation of our turret. I think that could look pretty cool. Also, one thing that I might want to do is move our camera in a little closer, but actually I kind of like that it's a bit distant. So we'll just keep it this way for now. So let's begin by hooking up our UI elements and then I'll show you, I'll show you how we can do that cool rotation thing. So um, in order to uh, kind of create some of the functionality around these buttons, um, what we could do is just create an empty object and reset the transform. And I'm sorry for the noise here. That's my cat playing around with uh, my water. So, um, and we'll rename this to say main menu. And uh, we'll put that at the top and we'll just add a component here that is called main menu. Then let's double click this to open it up in uh, Visual Studio. And I'm just gonna have a sip of water while we do that. Cool. And um, basically what I want to do is just create two very, very simple public functions in here. I want a public void called uh, play and a public void a public void called um, let's say whoops that's another cat stepping on the keyboard this is going crazy I should really lock those out of the room while I do these videos they're pretty much in every single one I think it's a bit exciting for them uh, so a public void and we'll call this one quit and uh, basically what we'll do is um, just throw a debug.log statement for now. So we'll just say uh, play and we'll say um, quit. Cool. And then we'll go inside of Unity and we'll find our top turret canvas, which is our play button. We'll add an on click event. So uh, close all of this down and then under the button, we'll add an on click event and we'll reference our main menu, go down under the main menu script and call play. And we'll do the exact same thing for our barrel canvas. So again, here on the button, add on click, reference the menu, go under the main menu script and call quit. So now when we hit play, we should see in the console here that ignoring these uh, stupid errors, when we hit play, it says play. And when we hit quit, it says quit. Cool. So all we really need to do now is just add a tiny bit of functionality. So uh, we'll be importing unity engine dot scene management in order to load a new scene. And we'll do that by going scene manager dot load scene and then the um, string or the name of that scene, which is going to be 
main level. But instead of hard coding this in, let's uh, make this editable inside the inspector. So let's just create a public string, which is going to be our level to load. And we'll set that equal to main level by default. And instead of putting in a string here, we'll put level to load. And in terms of quitting out of the application, let's actually put a debug.log statement in here saying something like exiting, exiting. And then we'll put in application.quit call. That's all we need to do. That is going to close down the application, whether on Mac or on Windows, it's going to just exit out. And the reason why I'm putting exiting in here is because that's actually not visible in the inspector so or in the editor. When we call application.quit in the editor, absolutely nothing happens. So it's just to let ourselves know that we pressed the quit button. Cool. So now we can just go in here and we can hit play. And we should see also under the main menu that we now have a level to load variable. And we can hit quit and it's going to say exiting. And we can hit play and it's going to transition to the next level where we can play. Awesome. So that's really, really easy. And because we now have multiple levels in here, what we want to do is go to file, build settings, and we want to make sure that we have our main level added here. And that we also have our main menu and that our main menu is set up to uh, be before the main level with a smaller build index. That means that it will be loaded first. So now when we start up the game, if we were to build this, we would see our main, main menu, and then we would use that to, trans to transition to our main level. Cool. So the final thing that I wanted to do was, of course, uh, to have the turret rotate. And also one thing, uh, just before we do that, currently when we hit play, it just shifts over immediately. There's no way of fade, or we don't currently fade or do any kind of nice transition there. If transitions between scenes is something that you really want to see, just let me know and we'll do a separate video on that. For now, I've actually already created a YouTube video on fading between scenes that is fairly general, so you should be able to implement it into this game on your own. So you can search for that on the channel, but if you want me to show how to do it here, I will of course do that. So just let me know. So what we can do then is just simply animate this turret a bit. So we'll find our standard turret and we'll go under the part to rotate. And this is of course the part that we rotate. So all we need to do in order to make our UI elements follow that is just parent them to that object. Just drag them in to make them childs of that object. And now when we rotate that, the UI elements are rotating as well. And you can create a script to control this. You could have enemies go by and this one follow it. That could be pretty fun. Or we could just go in here and create a very simple animation. Select the correct object, the part to rotate object. Hit create. Go on in the animation and we'll call this one the turret menu um, anim. And all we really want to do here is have the first keyframe kind of over here maybe we still want to be able to see and, and click on our play button and then have the next animation which is going to be like four seconds in be around say here something around there and then again after eight seconds we'll go back to this place there we go so just copy the initial keyframes and let's also smooth this out by going and selecting all of the keyframes and selecting flat. So now when we hit play, whoops, play from the beginning here, you can see that we have this nice and slow aiming animation. And it's enough that you can easily still click on the buttons, but it just adds a bit of fun and interactivity into our main level uh, or our main menu and really utilizes the fact that we, are, uh, uh, we have implemented this menu in three so that was pretty much all I wanted to show you. This is the final result. I hope you enjoyed this video. Let me know what you want to see next. Of course, I have some ideas, but still I could use more. And uh, yeah, thanks for all of the kind feedback. I'm really enjoying making these videos. And without further ado, I will see you in the next one. Thanks to all of the awesome Patreon supporters who donated in October. And a special thanks to Sultan El Shadif, Faisal Marify, and James Kelhoun. Become a supporter at patreon.com slash